talk a little bit about the fire division. Last year, our uh, incidents were down slightly, of 160 calls for, for our total incident. But as you can see, uh, pretty much trending as an average over five years. Our total number of fires was just under 300. Uh, total calls would include auto accidents and other calls for services like children walking cars and stuff. So actual fire events, we had 297. Of that, 157 was related to a structure fire or some hard of structure. Uh, we did have one fire fatality in 2012. Uh, we really don't like that statistic. We continue to work on that for our public education to try to get it back down to that zero mark. Uh, but again, it was a decrease from our previous year. Intentional fires, uh, again, is down. Now, intentional fires are not necessarily an arson fire. Uh, you can have someone who has set a pile of leaves on fire, that's an intentional fire, but it's a violation of city codes for that. That's not an arson fire. But arson fires were included in this last year. We had eight arson fires. Uh, our fire prevention education, that's our all of our fire prevention events for the entire year. Last year we were able to touch 10,232 folks in our city and there different events throughout the city. This would include our smoke trailers, smoke protector installs, uh, fire in the street, which we'll talk specifically about in just a few minutes. Spring clean and also at the, the fair. And the, the highest number of folks that we touched was in our elementary school children, which was 7,178. We do have a smoke detector install program. So if anyone calls our department and says, hey, I need a smoke detector, we go out and we will install one or more smoke detectors depending on what they need in their home. Uh, we also install carbon monoxide detectors in homes that have combustible furnaces or, or water heaters to look for that silent killer you can't smell CO. So we put those in for them. And then we also change batteries for someone who calls up and says, hey, my smoke detector's malfunctioning, it's beeping, we'll go out and our guys on the truck will like to install the battery stuff. And sometimes these are locations that the occupant can't get to, so we have to go in and lag in those rooms to get up to where those smoke detectors are. Some of the successful initiatives that we had last year, uh, during fire prevention week, we visited the 14 schools that's inside the city limits. We also covered our daycares and other events. Now, during fire prevention week, we also had the interstate fair going on, so we had folks out at the interstate fair. So just in that one week, we were able to contact 2,200 children and 344 adults. Uh, 322 visited our open house at the city, at the city hall on that Sunday. So we were very proud of that. Fire in the Streets is an initiative that we start when we change our clocks in the spring. We start this initiative because we have more daylight hours in the evening. And we actually pick neighborhoods that are at risk and we go out and contact those homes in those, in those neighborhoods. We actually knock on the doors, talk to the residents, give them some fire prevention material. We check their smoke detectors, check the CO2 detectors. We're trying to get that message out so again we can lower those fire uh, injuries and deaths. Uh, this past year, we did contact over 800 citizens, and uh, you can see the breakdown of 89 events between the time we changed our clocks in the spring and in the fall. We were blessed with some uh, equipment deliveries this past year. We uh, actually ended up with two engines, and we appreciate uh, the city management for helping us get those. So those two engines, two new engines are, are already in service, one down on the west side, and the other down on Union Street on the south side. And this is uh, one of the state of the art. It's got a lot of new safety features on this truck that we don't have on some of our turnout apparatus. So we're, we're glad to see those things. We had our first ever spring conference in April during the uh, spring break at the Zelda Conference College. We invited uh, fire service personnel from North Carolina and South Carolina, South Carolina to attend this with us. We had over 180 attendees that came to our conference uh, in addition to our, our folks. So it was a very successful initiative. We're going to repeat that again this year. And Actually, we're reaching out to some of our partners out in Georgia because they're, they're in residence in the folks. So we uh, fully expect that number to increase this year. Automatic aid. This is a uh, initiative that was started with Chief Bell prior to uh, to my coming to the city, and we've continued that effort. Uh, so far, we have uh, have automatic aid contracts with Congress, Croft, Drayton, Glendale, Hilltop, Roebuck, and Westby Fair Forest. And we do have two of those uh, partnerships in today, Roebuck. Uh, Chief Officer of here and also Linda, we appreciate you coming and spending some time with us. Uh, this assists us in giving us additional manpower when we need it. 
So when we have a structure fire or a larger event, these folks are dispatched with us automatically at the same time. So we have them coming, and they come to the scene and help us without us even having to call. This is done through our 911 dispatch office. We uh, rolled out MDTs last year, uh, got them fully operational. This allows our folks to get the information from the dispatch center real time as they're typing it in with their consoles that's being sent out to our trucks. So our guys are seeing what actually the dispatchers are seeing and typing in. Because a lot of times there's, there's additional information that gets sent to us over radio. So it helps our guys get prepared for the scene and understand what's going on and have a little more information that they may not want to get over radio. So this has been a very uh, uh, good project we put out for our guys and they seem to, seem to be used in this fully capacity. We also rolled out our new software. We installed it this past July, and uh, Lieutenant Wilkerson has done the lion's share of getting this up and going. He's here today, and we'll tell Chip, we, we appreciate all he's done with it. Uh, but our guys now can sit down and everything we need to do in the fire department in one software package. All our calls, our inventory, uh, our daily activities, everything that we need to track out we put into one piece of software. We also implemented iPads with this software where our guys can go out and do their inspections. And they get this screen, when they log in with their inspection district, they'll get a screen that has either red, green, or yellow balloons. A green balloon is that that inspection's completed. Red, they need to go there, or yellow is the reinspect. They can either tap on the balloon or they can pull the address from the lower menu and conduct that inspection real time on the iPad in the, the business. As they're conducting this inspection, they're also getting us some pre-fire plan information. We update the occupant information, the, the owner information, contact information, all those things that we may need if we respond in the middle of the night and we need to contact someone about this occupancy. So all this is updated real time every time we have an inspection. <coughs> Additionally, if there happens to be a violation, we can have that notice generated right on the iPad. We review it with that uh, occupant at that time he signs on it, we sign on it, and then we can either email it or print it for it. So everything's done now at the scene, right at one time, instead of us having to go back, print this stuff off, and then take it back to him and have him sign for it at a later time. So it saves him time, it saves us time, it's going to be more efficient in uh, using this technology. And iPads, again, are just making for better inspections. Our guys have a list that they can go down, it's a, it's a point and click, and they're, they're able to uh, do these inspections are quicker than we have, have done in the past using paper pads. Now last year using our paper system, we uh, had a total of 2,062 inspections. We're anxious to see how that number changes over this next year with our electronic uh, reporting system. One of the initiatives that the director wanted to push out this past year is social media, getting information out to the public as, as close to real time as possible. So the city of Spartanburg Fire Department does have a Facebook page. This is a screenshot from that Facebook page. As you'll notice, we're trying to push out PSAs that one up in the upper left-hand corner. We also have our calls that the information we've received, initial information we received from dispatch, is forwarded to our Facebook page and our Twitter. So it's not real time. It does it once every 30 minutes, but within a 30-minute time period, you can kind of understand what's going on in the city by looking and seeing what the call off is going. Uh, and then, if you notice, you see the residential fire. Uh, just below it is a Google map icon. You can click on that and it'll actually map that call for you and show you what the call is. And then we also put pictures of current incidents and other activities that we are conducting in the fire department on our Facebook page. This is our Twitter page. Again, we put PSAs on this. We push out our calls and it's also linked back to our Facebook page with our pictures and other information that we put out. Back around June, July, we began a uh, effort to, to conduct some academic or scientific burns on Folsom Street. And uh, this was a, a good example of a joint effort between the federal level, which was FEMA providing an assistance to fire fighter grant, and the National Institute of Standards and, Top, uh, Standards and Technology coming and conducting the scientific uh, research for us. State level of the South Carolina Fire Marshal's Office and the Fire Academy coming and assisting with this project, and then private entities being the International Society of Fire Service uh, Instructors, which actually acquired the grant and provided the oversight for the project. 
But I really want to talk about the local effort. Uh, the, local, the local effort on this was phenomenal. Uh, again, we started back in June, July, planning for this. I'm not sure that we didn't touch a city department in conducting this experiment. We, we uh, dealt with finance and Dennis Locksburg and James Kennedy. We dealt with legal uh, and the city manager's office, very supportive, public works. It, it just on and on. The PR department, public safety department, phenomenal support from the police department in helping us keep those areas secure and helping us bring some folks out, uh, some children out to escort those out. And then our firemen, they just went above and beyond the problem, going out preparing these structures to do this experimentation. And what we got out of this was some data to look at some of the theories that we have been practicing in our service that we've held pretty tightly for the last probably 200 years. We've never scientifically proven that they were correct or incorrect. So this data has now been collected. They're crunching it. We, we've got some preliminary results. We're seeing that there's some things that we probably don't need to change, and there's some things that we were correct on. But at least now we have the data behind it to move forward. And this grant is actually going to provide an educational curriculum for firefighters that is going to be deployed nationally. So this research that we did on Postal Street is going to impact the National Fire Service, and maybe even internationally. We've had some interest from Sweden and Germany on what experiments that have, uh, have revealed. We also incorporated our local public school, School District 7, with the Cleveland Academy of Leadership. And we provided some curriculum to the fifth grade prior to the experimentation being conducted. And then we actually brought them out uh, to the site on a walking field trip where they could talk to the scientists, they could look at how we conduct the experimentation, and then we took them to a, uh, a tent where we had media set up where they could actually watch these burns being conducted in real time. They, had, they actually got to see cameras on the inside of these homes as they, the fires ignited and how they burned and progressed through the, through the structure and then the suppression effort of the fire. Department. We did get a little bit of press on this. We had all of our local news media outlets covered it. We had some very good coverage from them. Uh, we just recently sent four and a half minutes of video to CNN, so I think they're going to pick up a story on it here in the future. Uh, but also the National Fire Service picked this up through several of our trade magazines, and then I thought what was really interesting is the last two, EurekaAlert.org and Phys.org. Those are physics and science-based uh, periodicals. And they picked this up also and printed a lot of the, the uh, scientific techniques that we were using in these burns. And we want to talk a little bit about the Northside Initiative because that's what this was all about. Again, the local effort, being able to go to the community and work with the Northside Development Corporation and get these properties in a, in a place where they can be redeveloped at a later time and improve that neighborhood, uh, which is what we're most excited about because we want to see that neighborhood become a thriving uh, neighborhood and community again. So the upper left-hand corner was the structures that we were actually conducting experimentation on. They were condemned, they were, you couldn't live in them, and the end result will be what you see in the lower right-hand corner, a nice lot that's been re and ready for redevelopment. As far as our 2013 initiatives, um, our accreditation is coming up again. We have a five-year accreditation cycle. So next year we'll be working vigorously to get off all the data that they require for the past five years together. Uh, we want to maintain our current fire prevention programs at their current levels and expand the capacity of our new software. We're, we're deploying that software and we've come a long way since, the, uh, since we launched it actually live in January, but there's just so many more things in that software that we can do. And just being able to continue to develop that is going to enhance the efficiency of the department. And then we're going to continue to seek social media opportunities through our Facebook and Twitter. 